Welcome everybody to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. It's a special day today. Stay tuned and I'll tell you why. Here it is, March 1st, 2023. Special day because speckled trout opens after being closed for the month of February. So the target today is going to be to hit this bay for some speckled trout. Try to get some of those in the box and uh, maybe try to pick up some redfish. So stay tuned, sit back, and we'll see you out there. And as always, remember to stay tuned to the end where I go over today's takeaways. Oh, I'm getting a bite. Oh, I got him, y'all. I got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Here we go. This may be a keeper trout here, y'all. I believe it is. All right, everybody. We got us a keeper trout, a nice trout. We got us a nice trout here. All right, let's get you off the hook. Nice trout, 19 inch speckled trout. That nice yellow mouth. Good trout, good trout. So he's gonna go ahead and go in the box. In Florida here, we get to keep three. So uh, we're on our way. Let's get him in the box. There he is, got him, got him, got him, got him. Got him. All right, I think he's gonna be a keeper. I'm only in about a foot of water. net I think I made his boat flip this oh I should have gotten the net broke my line wow should have used the net Got him in the net. He may be over 20. He may have to go back because he's too big. Let's see. Let's see here. He's a 21 inch trout. Unfortunately, he's too big. He's got to go back. The other one I got was right at a little over 20. So, but uh, you know, we got to get him back. That was a nice trout though. But nonetheless, it was a fun fight and a good fish. He struck that topwater several times before he got it. But uh, let's get let's get that topwater back out there. All right, so that fish was too big. I had to let him go. If I got one more, I'd have my limit. So it's kind of an odd predicament. Do you want to catch a smaller one to reach your limit or catch a big one because it's more fun on this topwater? I don't know, I'll keep fishing and see what happens, but Leave a comment below. What do you think I should wish for? A smaller one to get in the box or a bigger one that's more exciting? We'll see. Here comes a shark, y'all. Can y'all see that wake right there? You see the fin? I hope that's picking up. Look at this shark. He just saw the boat. Look at him. Look at this shark. That'll put it into fishing. I could have provided footage for the movie Jaws. Look at that. I don't know that I've ever seen a fin above water that long. And it's just because we're so shallow. 
Now there's your shot for Jaws right there with the sun in the background. Regular Steven Spielberg up here. This is good scallop grounds too. <laughs> Don't let my wife see this clip. We won't be scalloping back here. All right, well, he's moved on. That's a good thing. He was exciting to look at, but sharks being around like that tend to take the attention of the fish that you're trying to catch. They're more interested in not being eaten than eating. And who can blame them? I don't know if you can see this, but there's that line right there that's just where there's no grass, where it's just sand. That's where somebody was coming across, didn't realize it was so shallow and their propeller dug into the ground a little bit. That's quite a long one. This guy running this boat didn't want to give up. But sometimes I've seen fish swimming through it like it's a little highway. It's pretty interesting. Oh, good one, good one, good one, good one. Good one, good one. This might even be a redfish. We'll see if he comes to the top. No, it's a trout. It's a nice trout. Tighten this up just a touch. Get this guy on board here. Oh, no, that's a redfish. That's a redfish. I think it's a nice little slot redfish. Nice redfish. Look at this. Good redfish. All right. Let's get a measurement on this guy. Oh, I gotta go to the big ice chest. You're longer than 20. All right, so. You're about 24 and a half. He's gonna be our keeper redfish for today. That's for sure. All right, y'all. Look at this redfish, 24 and a half inches. Got the standard two spots. Sometimes you'll see a lot more spots, but this one's got the two. So let's go get him in the box and get that lure back out there. Oh, a flounder. Wow. I think he's a keeper. Where is he? The bottom, of course. Oh, yeah, he's a keeper. Oh, get him up. Get him up. Look at that. Wow. Well, I'll take this in place of that last keeper trout any day. Look at that. Nice flounder. Nice flounder. All right, we got him all in the net. Let's get him off first. All right, you're free. We'll deal with the net in a minute. All right, so he's got to be 14. Let's see what he measures out to be. I'm pretty sure he's 14. Oh, yeah. He's 17. Look at this flounder. Nice looking flounder. I'm sure you've seen this before, but you know these guys lay on the bottom. You know their markings look very much like the bottom, so they can just settle themselves down 
you know, in the sand and just kind of wait for something to come by like my lure did. And so, you know, they've got both of their eyes on the same side. So they lay, lay flat and have both of their eyes to see. So these are really good eating, really good eating. Like I said, I'll trade my last keeper trout for this. The only reason I haven't gotten the last keeper trout is I haven't gotten one small enough, oddly enough. So let's get him in the cooler and uh, let's get that lure back out there. All right, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and head on back to the house. It was definitely a successful day here on the first day of trout season. So before I do that, I wanna kinda give you the gear breakdown of what I was using today. Um, this right here is a Salt Strong product. Um, it's a Slam Shady Bomber. This is an eighth ounce weedless hook. Um, this is what I caught that redfish on. This is another Salt Strong product right here. This is a Fred uh, paddle tail. There again with another eighth ounce um, weedless hook. That first trout was caught on this one. And then the top water lure I was using, um, this is another Salt Strong product. This is a um, Moonwalker top water and that's what I caught those couple um, trout on. And then lastly, I caught that flounder on this um, mirror lure. This is a Catch 2000. This is a sinking um, hard bait. So, you know, obviously it went to the bottom for that flounder to get it. So those were all successful lures today. And I'll see you back at the house. All right, so I'm going to clean this trout up. First thing I like to do is go ahead and get a cut right behind the head down to the backbone. Kind of make a slit to his belly and make you a slit just like that. Then you can kind of pull these things out. The main thing here is get this swim bladder out. That's going to make things real difficult if that's in your way of the knife. Then you can go ahead and just get down your knife down to the backbone. And then you can just follow along the backbone, going all the way down, but I don't cut all the way off, leave that attached just a little bit, then so when I get my fillet off the skin, it gives me a little bit of an anchor. So then you just follow your knife along the top of the skin and get that fillet off. Nice looking fillet. Then you want to get this, these bones and this rib cavity out. So you just kind of put your knife right behind these bones. And just follow that line. And you get that off. Feel for bones. If there's any, there's going to be in this area right here. So that looks good. Go ahead and flip everything over. Making sure this is all out of the way. Do the exact same thing on this side. What I like to do after I get my fillets clean is I've got an ice chest over here with some ice in it and some water. I just go ahead and put those fillets in there just to keep those fillets nice and cold while I finish up the rest of the fish. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this flounder. Disclaimer before I do this, I've never filleted a flounder before. I've always just cut the, scaled it, cut the head off, cleaned it out, and um, grilled it or baked it. But um, I'm gonna give this a try. I really want to kind of learn how to fillet these things. So you'll be coming along for the ride here. So first off, what I'm gonna do is kind of feel where this head ends. It's about right there. Then kind of feel the um, cavity right here where that is. So I'm gonna try to follow that down just like that. Now there's this little line right down the middle that you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down to the backbone right there on that line. There you go. Now I'm down to the backbone. Now I'm just going to fillet the meat off this way. Just kind of resting my knife along the bones there. that off here we go nice little fillet not bad at all okay so let's just do the same thing on this side just kind of following along the bones there we go good looking fillet right there okay we're going to flip them over and do the exact same thing 
Now this side is not going to have as much meat. Not bad for my first time. I did miss a little meat right there. But uh, I would say not bad overall. Alright, so you're going to get the skin off. Just take the fillet off the skin like you like we did those speckled trout or any fish really. Again, I'm, my left hand is just following my knife down. There we go. Alright, so to clean this redfish, it's going to start like start out like any other fish. Go ahead and make a cut behind the pectoral fin all the way down to the backbone. Go down through the belly like that. Now what you're going to want to do with this one is I like to start right here about where the tail starts at the body and just go ahead and make you a little slit and then you're just going to follow along. You don't need to go too deep. And I've tried this all kind of ways. First, and it makes more a lot of sense to do this backbone cut this way. For whatever reason, this always works a lot better. And once you get that, you're just going to flay this meat. Just kind of trying to ride on top of those bones all the way to the backbone. Now what I like to do, once I kind of get up to the backbone in this area right here, is I go ahead and I know these rib bones kind of in this area right here. Stick my knife all the way through just beyond the ribs so I'm not cutting through them and then I go to the backbone and I'm just going to cut the rest of this off in one motion like that. Now the reason I do that you've got this flexibility with this fillet to get these rib bones out. Now this is the one of the hardest parts because you have to imagine these ribs you know are, are making a cavity right here so you're when you cut this off you're gonna have to kind of go up and over them a little bit. It feels like you're gonna lose a lot of meat by going up and over but you're not and then once you kind of get through to them or so then you can go ahead and get your knife in there once you're over the ribs then you can just go down and follow down to where your cut started when you cut it off this way you're just going to meet that spot i see all that was ribs and so you said there's no meat missing right there Alright everybody, welcome to the kitchen. We're going to cook up this trout that we caught today. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pan fry it in our cast iron skillet and we're going to make a lemon butter garlic sauce with capers um, afterwards. This is, a, this is a recipe we've been using for years so we like it a lot. So our first step is I've got our cast iron skillet heating up. Um, a little bit over medium. I don't like it too hot. Um, this cast iron skillet can get really hot on you really fast. You know, I didn't put a whole lot. We don't want the fish swimming in it. Just a little bit of a light coating on the bottom um, just to keep the fish from sticking and get a good flavor. These are our ingredients um, for this recipe. So we've got our olive oil and we've got some Italian seasoning. This is uh, Chef Paul's Seafood Magic. Um, we like this a lot and you have some garlic now you could use fresh garlic if you wanted to but I find this minced garlic so much easier some lemon juice and then our capers so our first step we're gonna go ahead and season the top side of the fish so what we're gonna do when we put this fish in you always want to put the side up that you're gonna serve you want to put that in your pan first because that's gonna get a nice good sear then we'll season the other side once it's in there this is not super super hot about that much and then just a little italian season just a little bit on there it just gives us a little bit extra flavor and then i like to just kind of mash that down so then when we do flip it onto the pan we don't lose you know much of our seasoning so i'm going to go ahead and let this pan finish heating up and then we'll get this fish in there all right so i'm going to go ahead and put this fish in we've got our olive oil just smoking so we want to go ahead and put those in um, these are quite big fillets and this is a, a good size cast iron but we're gonna have to kind of be careful to get this in there we go 
let's go ahead and get our seasoning on the other side. Alright, so we're going to let that go for about three or four or five minutes. But what we're kind of looking for is when we start to get some white edges. Um, and then we'll flip it to finish cooking on the other side. You know, today I actually caught an inshore slam, um, which in this part of Florida is typically a keeper trout, keeper redfish, and keeper flounder. And, uh, you know, that doesn't happen every day. So that was a, a fun accomplishment today, especially on the first day of, of trout season where you could actually keep one of those trout. So it's been five minutes. So I've checked it and it looks like it's good to flip. But if you'll see right here, you know, you've got some white edges starting to form. Um, still pink in the middle, but you know, but we're going to flip it so that'll, that'll get cooked when we flip it. There we go. That looks perfect. Okay, so it's a, it was about four minutes on each side. And if you look here, you can kind of see the fish starting to separate. You have some nice uh, flaky white meat right there. You know, it's a, a little bit firm to the touch. So we're going to go ahead and take these off. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off my heat. And we're going to go ahead and get these plated up. This cast iron skillet is quite hot. So I want to let it cool just for a minute or two because we're going to put some butter in there and garlic and we don't want those things to burn. So what I'm going to do first is just put probably like two tablespoons of butter in. And you've got all those spices still in there. Then what we're gonna do is probably put about two teaspoons or so of garlic in there. Just stir that in. Now this garlic cooks quick and you don't want to burn it. So that's going. And then we're gonna go ahead and put probably a spoon, teaspoon and a half of lemon juice. And then we're gonna put our capers in. And we're just gonna you know, heat those up. Now that's all heated up. So you get your sauce. And there you go. Fresh speckled trout with garlic, butter, lemon, caper sauce. Bon Appetit! Alright, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And Before I go over today's takeaways, if you like this kind of video where I give you on the water action as well as give you my tips and tricks to find fish, then please hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and uh, hit that notification bell on. I try to get out about one video per week and that way you won't miss my future videos. So today's takeaway is really about that confidence bait. The topwater for me is, is a pretty good confidence bait. Um, it helps me find fish. You know, it's exciting when I catch them. Um, and it's just an all around good lure for me. Um, often people say that you only use those at, at dawn and dusk. Um, but today, you know, it, the sun was shining bright and uh, able, I was able to catch quite a few trout on it or at least get some strikes on it. So I think when you use your confidence bait, you know you're out there expecting to catch fish so you're probably going to be a little more focused and uh, do those little subtle things that will help you catch fish. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Until next time we'll see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.